This is a Z89 exclusive interview. All right, what is going on, everyone? It's Alana. And Molly. And we are joined by a very special guest in studio right now. <laughs> Garrett Murphy, also known as It's Murph, is joining us right now for a live interview. Let's Woo! go. Happy to be here. Welcome. We're very excited to have you. Let's so, go cues. Come on. Yeah. So, I mean, what do you think of Syracuse so far? It's fun. Yeah. Great town. Great people. Yeah, I'm excited. It's going to be a good day today. Got here last night. Went to Lucy's. Love Lucy's. Yeah. Great times. <laughs> All right, so, I mean, let's just, let's get into it. By the way, the song you just heard is Food for the Soul, the song that blew up on TikTok. I mean, you wrote that song for a class. What was that like to have that song blow up and, you know, get to, get you to where you are right now? Yeah, it was pretty crazy. I literally, the assignment in the class was, like, write a song with around a story, and so... Like, for the class, I, like, wrote that story of, like, when I first experienced the world of electronic music. And then I put the story in the song because I thought that was the assignment. And then I brought it into class. And I was the only person who put the monologue in the song. And I was like, ah, like, I'm still trying to, like, make a career out of this. So I, like, took a video of it. Then it went super viral on social media. And I was like, we're going to keep it. Like, whatever. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, that must have been crazy. And and what was your, I mean, you were you expecting that or, like, you know? Um, No, not really. Not at all to be honest, but I had, like, a, I released Lost and Breathing before that, and, like, I was trying to, my senior year, I was always trying to make music, like, I was working in music business before that, um, and so I was trying to do, like, content, because I posted some stuff about, like, Lost and Breathing, posting, like, playing your song in front of the class, you know, just, like, cringy content that just kind of, like, showed people that's organic, you know, I'm, I was in music school at the time, and so I did that for Food for the Soul, and then I just kind of went, and I just went along with it, rode, rode the wave. Awesome, so... Can you go more into detail? So you said that you, um, for this assignment, it was to build a story and then build the song around the story. Mm -hmm. So how did you reflect it that story sonically on Food for the Soul? Like what inspired that story you're saying? Well, um, within the music. Oh, well, so when I was like, what, a sophomore in high school, I went to a Porter Robinson concert. I actually wrote one of my college essays about this that <laughs> to USC, and it was like, when I first experienced World of Electronic Music, it was a Porter Robinson concert that was, like, really based around, like, saw waves. Um, like, that's what, like, Language, one of my favorite songs of all time, like, classic EDM song. So when I was thinking about how to sonically reflect that, I was like, what got me into electronic music? Like, those chords, like, it may not make sense because it's, like, sound design stuff, but, like, mm -hmm. it's all, like, saw waves, like, stacked on top of like, those chords. That's what gets that, like, euphoric sound the drop has like saw waves like modulating and so that's like where i took the whole idea let's make a whole song around it and it really encapsulated like the feeling that got me into it for the first time yeah, yeah. i read an article and they described the song as euphoric and i feel like that was a great description mm -hmm. of the song itself so. yeah yeah i mean going along with that that's what people are saying on tiktok you have twenty-eight thousand people you know creating videos you have two over two million monthly listeners on spotify i mean this song most you know songs that blow up on tiktok there's a trend that goes with it there's a dance there's something this song doesn't have that so i mean that means this song is going viral because it's genuinely like a good song and how does that make you feel well it makes me feel good obviously <laughs> <laughs> um but like there wasn't any, any like intention to make this like a viral song you know what i mean yeah. i think that's what people can get behind like a lot of people get on tiktok they're like yo listen to my song this shit's super hot or sorry i don't know if i'm allowed to cut my <laughs> hair um but no that wasn't the intention i was like in class and like it was all like super organic super natural and i think when you know you put yourself out there organically people are more willing to get behind it and then when the song and the music's actually good then it's kind of like one plus one equals five not two you know what i mean mm -hmm. exactly yeah, that's a perfect segue into our next question for you, actually. Um, so because TikTok has become so saturated recently with DJs um, that are trying to stand out, what is your advice to all the aspiring DJs listening right now to get your music heard and just separate yourself from others? Um, I think the hardest part about being an artist is to be yourself. You know, mm -hmm. everyone like can go on social media and be like, well, look what this person's doing. Let's try to replicate what they're doing. But that just like isn't who you are organically. And when people are like just be themselves on TikTok, like, that's the hardest thing to do is to get out there because you're, like, the most raw, you're the most, like, open to get criticized, but when you do, it's, like, the most rewarding thing, and so, like, don't try to be someone you're not, like, I get on TikTok, and I'm just, like, whatever feels right, I'm, it's more of, like, quality over quantity at the end of the day, I don't just, like, get on there to post and be, like, 
I don't know, like oversaturating it, you know, just be true to yourself, be true to the music, and then you'll find your fans. Like, you can start in a niche. Like, don't try to force it right off the bat. It happens differently. Chris Lake didn't make it until he was, like, in his 30s, you know what I mean? And he's blowing up and playing some of the biggest headline shows in the world. So. Yeah, everyone definitely has their own path to success, yeah. for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, speaking, you mentioned Chris Lake and other DJs. Who have you been able to connect with since the success of this song? Who's the most famous oh. person you've connected <laughs> with since? Oh, man. Um, in terms of DJing and stuff, I've been playing, like, a bunch of festivals this summer. So I got to meet, like, Chris Lake, and S.G. Lewis was super nice, and... We have I don't him. know, the we list goes on and on. Here, on here too. Yeah. Really? Oh, he's the yeah. man, Sam, yeah. I also, like, know Lucid Child's been so, like, good to me, and so is Dr. Fresh. Like, um, talk about, like, mentoring and putting me under their wing. I'm going to w one of the Lucid Child kids' wedding in Rome oh, next really? June. Cool. I'm like, I'm in the cut. That's awesome. Yeah, I was super excited to hear that, so... But, yeah, I mean, Khloe Kardashian posted Food for the Soul on her story the other day, and I was like, okay. The other day? You yeah, it. I was you like, okay, That's Khloe, it. we're best friends. Yep. No, now you guys have to meet. You have to. I posted around my story because that John Summit, Alex Earl stuff was happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, I was like, oh, like, enough of this John Summit, Alex Earl, like, my best friend, you know, Khloe Kardashian showing support. <laughs> like, Lamar, I just have no idea who she is. Uh, <laughs> That's amazing to get her support. And I know you touched on, you know, some of the music festivals you performed at. Yeah. What has that been like? And let's also talk about Coachella, one of your first real live shows, Coachella. I mean, who yeah. can Crazy. say that? That is that's insane. Yeah. What was that like? That was uh that was a super special moment because I also was at USC at the time, you know, and everybody from USC goes to Coachella. Yeah. And so that was like it was the Do Lab stage too, and the Do Lab stage is the only stage in Coachella that doesn't book on like the main lineup. So it's mm -hmm. like a special cultural stage that everybody comes and plays for free. Like we had Subtronics play, like everybody from like, like it's just crazy lineup. And to be able to go play that cultural stage during when Food for the Soul like just blown up, like that was just like a wow, like it was an all time moment. Yeah. That's, I remember that for the rest of my life for sure. Yeah. No, that, that's a great way to just get out into the industry and, and you're killing it ever since. Our next question for you is what was it like growing up in Nashville surrounded by primarily country music as an aspiring DJ? And how did you get started into DJing? Oh, man. Um, yeah, Nashville is a very live music centric mm -hmm. place. I mean, right now there's like people will come in and play like the big concerts. There'll be like DJs and stuff. But in high school, like, I don't even know if I was necessarily focused necessarily on DJing as I was like trying to learn how to produce music because I didn't even know if that was going to be like an option. Like DJing came a part of me being able to play my own songs live. You know what I mean? So that's where that came from. But it was always a focus on like producing music and I sucked when I started. I was <laughs> so bad. Like it took me like six years, like until like my junior year of college until I was finally like, wow, like I'm making like industry competitive tracks. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And I didn't want to release music until then. I was just like grinding like and I had nothing to st like stand for it. Everyone's like, what do you want to do? And I was like, oh, like, like they're always like, no, like that's not a possibility. Like you have nothing like you have zero monthly listeners. I was like just fully committed. Like I was my senior year about to graduate from USC. I released my first song in November and everyone's like, what are you going to do after? And I was like, I'm putting it all on the line, fellas. Like I didn't do this <laughs> past like six years. So I think it was like super important to wait for the right moment for me mm -hmm. to to feel like it was like the right time to release music too. I feel like a lot of people, you know, will release music over the time and get better as it goes, but it's interesting that you wanted to like wait until you really felt yeah. confident. Um, but it seems like you have, you know, supportive parents. Obviously, For you know, sure. you go and, Blessed. you know, yeah. you say, I want to be a DJ. What was that like? And, and what is it like to have their support? Um, I mean, for obviously their sports, everything. I couldn't have gone to USC without them. Like I'm blessed to be in, in a place of privilege where they could help pay for college. You know what I mean? Um, Otherwise, I'd probably be, like, my brother and sister. I'm also the youngest, so, like, that gives me mm. an advantage. Um, my brother and sister both, like, studied to be CPAs, like, oh, really? accountants. I probably would have gone business or something like that. I got into USC off a of Spanish major. Oh, yeah, wow. I didn't even, okay. like, and then when I before I got there, like, I dropped it, and I reapplied to be in the music school. Because I just Spanish? wanted to go to, because I speak fluent Spanish. <laughs> oh, cool. I lived in Spain for a little bit, and I did, like, a bunch of, like, uh, community service in, like, Dominican Republic and stuff like that. So, that was just kind of, like, I was always, like, I don't know. I get like stuck in hobbies and I just like chase them down. And music was one of those that just happened to turn into a career. You know what I mean? And what was it like, you know, for your friends to see all the success you were having, you know, going, you know, to school after that song blew up? What was that like to be there? I feel like it was super important for me, freshman, sophomore, junior year. Like I made all of my friends before any of the music stuff started to happen. Like it's not like anyone's like 
rubbing up on me now being like oh like i'm trying to be friends because of the like dude i've had my friends for like three or four years now you know what i mean nothing's changed also everyone graduate usc the people are living in la like literally we, i hang out with the same people we go to the same bars like nothing's changed That's amazing. you know what i mean so i feel like a lot of people are in a weird position when they come up and then like they don't know who's fake and who's real like i feel like everyone i've ever met it's been super genuine you know i'm just yeah. a normal 23 year old guy you know, <laughs> no you do you just seem very down to earth and we appreciate yeah. that a lot so what was your favorite part about college since you're a fresh graduate oh man um i don't know i think college is a great place to go and it's like it's like if you have the opportunity just to go try out a bunch of different things like you're you're not like on like a strict schedule you make your own schedule you know Mm -hmm. but for me that was super important to be able to like work with other artists at usc like that girl who sings on food for the soul that's just one of my friends jules you know so like we're just sitting in my room and just like messing around and lost for example that my biggest track food for souls not my biggest track lost came when me and jack august were just sitting in my dorm room for literally like three hours like at midnight one day and we made that vocal chop and then produced out the rest of the song. I got my buddy Twin Diplomacy involved um, and because he lived literally down the hall. And so then, boom, we made that song, and then we sent it off, and then Rascal got assigned to Gemstone. So, or uh, yeah, so that's how that song came about. And, you know, speaking of your songs, what's your favorite song you're, you ever made? What song are you most proud of? Oh, I, I've been, like, taking a break from releasing music. Some of the stuff I have in the vault right now is, is I think, is super special. The next song I'm going to release is m- probably my favorite song. I played it at Coachella, and then I've just been, like, uh, gatekeeping it ever since, but I think it's finally time for, for it to come out. Oh, I'm excited. That yeah. makes me so excited, saying it's your favorite. And yeah. It's not even. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, we were just talking about your festival performances um, at Coachella and other cool festivals. So we wanted to ask, what's your dream festival performance? Ooh, that's tough. Um, some of my favorite festivals, like Coachella and Electric Forest, I've been blessed to play. Um, I want to play Electric Forest next year. I want to play Lollapalooza. I want to play... Uh, Lightning in a Bottle. I want to play Tomorrowland. I, I, mean, I want so to play them all. Them. I want to all play them all. Are you kidding me? Sorry. I love festivals. That's the best. Everyone's there to experience the music, you know? Yeah, yeah. Everyone's there for the full day. <laughs> so it's hard to beat the vibes at festivals. Oh, I actually really want to play Bonnaroo because that was the first festival I ever went to, and that's in Tennessee. That would definitely be Oh, that's, so, that's yeah, so full yeah, circle. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. have yeah. to. Yeah. That would be, that, I mean, I have to. I mean, if I get booked, are you kidding <laughs> well, me? Well, <laughs> I, look, I mean, I feel like Coachella is one of the biggest music festivals, if not the biggest, at least in the U.S., and one you world, already yeah. you yeah. already performed at Coachella. I mean, you are on track. You were on track to perform this year. I feel like it's going to be a very big year for so. you. I hope so. I hope so. We got the new music coming out. As long as that does well. So I also want to know. I mean, what music do you listen to? Who are you listening to right now? Who are some artists you want to work with, collab okay. with? Yeah, give us Let's your hear ox. It. Oh man, I listen to a lot of genres of music. Like I'll even listen to like indie, like surf rock. Like um, I listen to house. I listen to everything. But in terms of electronic music, we'll stick there. Um, I love, like, mixing the lines between, like, Disclosure, like, Mm. Chris Lake, Eric Prids, like, Sperry Can't Swim, Clooney. I don't know. It's, like, the mix of, like, deep and then the mix of, like, melodic, you know? And I'm trying to find, like, that middle lane where it's, like, sometimes I'll do just deep songs like Breathing and sometimes I'll do just melodic, like, Youthful Kids. But, you know, I'm just, like, sitting in that lane, like, being able to play the deep stuff. I want to play Ibiza. You know, and I'd be able mm. to play, like, the more melodic stuff because I, I like that stuff. It's nice to listen to in the car. It's nice, good daytime energy. makes you feel good, so. Exactly. Yeah, I love that type of music. So, you know, I'm listening to you. And I know you have, <laughs> obviously, a lot of fans. Let's go. I want to talk, you know, right now you're in Syracuse, New York. Um, you know, you're at one of the top party schools, party cities uh-huh. in the country. Yeah, coming from a, a Syracuse student, huh? I, well, you know. Possibly, but what is it like, you know, what is that this environment like and, and what is coming from someone who's in college or just graduated college, you know, what is that environment like for you and how does that compare to, like, the festival, yeah, like, especially going from college, college yeah, to yeah, both? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's different, you know what I mean? Because when you go into a festival, um, people are, like, there and they're more a little bit open to hearing necessary. They, they understand, I would say, if you're going to an electronic music festival, they understand electronic music better. It's mm-hmm. so, like you can go more like what you actually as an artist want to play. Exactly. When I come to these college parties, there's like people that have never like li- they don't listen to house music or they don't. You know what I mean? I'm not going to sit there and play like deep, minimal tech for an hour <laughs> on stage. I was just going to be like because like at festivals, like people are just like, kind of in the groove and they're there. Party here to socialize, they're to have fun. Like I'm open format at a college party. You know what I mean? I just play like 
what people want to hear. I'll exactly. play my own it's songs. What like, hear, yeah. But I mean, obviously, I'll play stuff that I want to play. But it's more just like it's more of just a party. You know, we're there to yeah. have fun. Like I, I was in college. Like, I just graduated. I know what, how to play a college party. So mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah, I tither, so, the, I tither the line. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. So as a, f a fresh graduate, like we talked about, um, what would your advice be for um, all of our listeners who are currently college students? Obviously, we're in such a we're in the town of Syracuse University. So what would your advice be, just college student to college student? Um, on graduating, on life, on on life. Graduating. yeah. Um, Aside from music, following your dreams. Yeah, it's never too late to be what you might have been. Whoa, you know what I mean? That was deep. That's a powerful quote. It that is. Was it deep. is. We gotta write that um, down. But yeah, honestly, just like this is your time to do whatever you want. Like you don't have to have it figured out in the next four years. Like I was planning on if it didn't work out, I was gonna be graduating with no plan. You know what I mean? And that's kind of what it's all about when you put something on the line. Like. You can take a safe road. You can do, like, accounting. I was going to do accounting and still do music at the same time. You know what I mean? Like, there's no right answer. It's, like, find the right path for you. Like, everyone knows deep down what you want to do, and, you like, whatever feels right, follow your gut, you know? Cause, yeah. Because you're, you're always right, and you'll always hear so many people telling you what to do. Mm -hmm. and, like, so many voices, so many, like, suggestions, so many opinions. But at the end of the day, like, who cares? Like, do whatever you want to do. And, like, for example, when I was doing the college stuff, people were like, oh, like, you're never going to, like, make that a career. You're never going to do that. I'm like, well... I never listened to that, and now here we are, you know, on exactly. Z89 Party Station. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've, I'm a big believer of everything happens for a reason, and I feel like you're, you know, very chill. If you put the hard work in, it will happen for you. You got you to believe in it, though. It's yeah. like I'm a big com big supporter of manifesting what you want. Like, mm -hmm. like back, I, belie I believed it. Like, I, I was always like, I'm going to make it, and I just kept saying it over and over and over and over again and just told myself that. And when you say it, it starts to, like, your actions become your thought or your what is it? I can't remember what it is. Like your thoughts Multiple become your actions. actions. Your actions become, yeah, I don't know. Your words, your thoughts become your words. Your words become your actions. Your <laughs> actions you become your destiny. <laughs> Boom. There yeah. it is. Come on. I actually, there I haven't heard that, but, but yeah. Uh, there's a quote. No, that's, that's like a, yeah. Yeah, that's, no, that's great. And, you know, talking about some future things here, uh -huh. I know you said you have some of your favorite songs ever yep. you're releasing soon. Yep. I know you're working with, this is Evelyn. How yep. did you guys meet? And, and what's it like working together? And what's the status on that song? The song is going to come out. Yeah, for sure. Um, Evelyn's great. She's super talented. She's, like, doing a bunch of, like, touring with Jai Wolf right now. Um, but she lives in L.A., and uh, actually that vocal that got sent in the song was originally part of, like, a, a like a pitch song for, like, with, like, Alex Chapman and all these songwriters. I can't remember like the, what the producer's names are off the top of my head. But that song, I heard it for the first time, and I was like, I need that vocal, like, so badly. And the original song was way more, like, deep, ma mal like, deep house tech and i was like that vocal is like so euphoric like we got to make a euphoric song around that and so i did and then i just took me forever to get that them on board with releasing it and then now it's finally coming out so so some 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 songs are like right from scratch like youthful kids like i wrote all the lyrics and then how one of my friends come in top line same with food for the soul like lost i wrote together with jack august you know all songs come about from different ways but that one was that was a weird one and and because maybe because I didn't write necessarily the songwriting lyrics makes me love it even more, you know, because mm -hmm. sometimes I overthink what I what I do. Yeah, you know? that makes so. sense. So, I mean, there are three months left of the year. Where do you see yourself at the end of this year and where do you want to be at the yeah, end of next what's year? What's the future for It's Murph? Um, I mean, it all starts with the music, you know, being a music artist, you got to have good music. So that's most important. Um, I kind of want to keep building. Like, I want to play bigger festivals, bigger, better slots, you know, maybe do some collabs down the road. I've been super focused on just putting out my own music because sometimes you can get branded, you know, too much with other people and, like, they're the reason for this or they're the reason for that. Mm -hmm. So it's like, let's get some Just It's Murph songs out there, mm -hmm. you know, just to, so they know I'm not ghost produced. It's Just Murph. <laughs> <laughs> what, I what's went to music school, I promise. With we do. We have some merch for you. We, oh, and it's, what's oh, it's, it's just yeah, it's merch. It's That's what you said. It's the eighty nine merch. <laughs> yes, yeah. it's merch. <laughs> well, it was so great having you here this morning. We are very excited for your performance later. You are doing amazing. We're so excited for your future releases because we all love your music so much and we're so happy to have you here on z89 so thank you so much yeah no, thank, thank you, you guys for, for having us. me it's my first radio interview so Ooh. very exciting we're Taking so happy Virginia. to have you yes <laughs> very exciting and everyone go follow it's murph on instagram on it's TikTok. murph music it's yeah. murph music and let's get weird tonight yeah oh yeah it's gonna yeah. be a good night <laughs> it's gonna be a good night <laughs> well this is lost the first song you ever released yep. on your party station z89 cheers thanks guys so much